Jeff from Rogue 7, Rogue Tech Support. I'm here to bring you a video today about USB hacks and wireless hacks and how to protect yourself from them. Uh, it's going to be a lengthy video, but I assure you by the end of it, you'll have a better knowledge about and understanding about how these programs work and why they're so dangerous. Uh, the first program we're going to be looking at is Kane Enable. I left out uh, a few key portions of this step-by-step uh, -step as to not give away how to do this uh, exactly. Uh, so let's take a look at how it's done. I'm going to show you something called an ARP poison. So this portion is going to show you how a wireless uh, network can be hacked by a hacker uh, using something called an ARP poison. We're going to get into what that is in a little bit. First off, I'm going to show you how they do this. This is a program called Kane Enable. It's a really script kiddie tool, but a lot of people will use it because it is easy. Uh, they'll scan for your MAC address once they're on your network. Scan for the MAC address, and they'll find a router and a computer that's on that router. Uh, then they'll go ahead and go into ARP, uh, and they'll select your router and your computer, which will position him between your router and you. So it'll make your router think that he's you, and it'll make you your computer think that he's the router. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. Hit ARP, and it will start poisoning. Now I'm going to bring up my packet analyzer, get our capture ID. Now everything you're going to see here is coming from uh, this person's computer right here. So these are all, these all contain uh, packets of information. They can gather passwords and they can gather um, all sorts of information about you. They can see what you're doing, where you're going. See right here, they just went to a website. So this is a pretty dangerous tool for them to use. Um, they can also go into can enable and see any passwords you might have typed. This person hasn't typed any yet. But they could see them. If, the, if you typed in your FTP server to upload something, they could get your password and information or any password you might use on the internet or uh, for your email or any of these. So let's talk now about how to stop somebody from hacking into your uh, wireless network. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our web browser and most routers um, address will be 192.168.1.1 you're going to hit enter. It's going to give you an option to put in a password. Most default passwords it are uh, some combination of admin, administrator, and pass or password. Uh, uh, make sure you set up a password right here. It will probably be in your maintenance section. I don't know what kind of router you have, obviously, so you'll have to search around a little bit. Mine's in my maintenance setting. So we'll go there. You type in the old password, the default one. You type in a new password, and then you repeat it, hit apply, let your router reset, and you'll have that part taken care of. The next portion we're going to talk about is uh, how to set up an access list to your router so only specific people are able to get onto it. So it will usually be in the advanced setting under wireless settings or something like that. Um, and you'll see a little ac uh, little part right here that says wireless, access, wireless card access list. Sorry about that. And uh, you can see my PC's all set up and my MAC address is recorded in this. So you just turn on access control and hit apply. And that will take care of that part. That's another good step on how to do this. Another uh, really good set uh, to do this is to enable not WEP key. WEP is an outdated uh, wired, equivalent, uh, wired equivalent privacy setting. It's outdated and it won't work anymore. As you saw me earlier, pop the web key. So you're going to want to use uh, WPA PSK, which is Wi-Fi Protected Access Pre-Shared Key. And you're going to do, you're going to type in a passphrase. It's between 8 and 63 characters, and you're going to give it a key lifetime, which is just how long your router uh, lets it sit in there uh, before asking you for it again or refreshing it. And then you'll hit apply. This is the best way to protect from an ARP poisoning attack. There is no way to guarantee that somebody won't. So you can come into your uh, your 
router and see who's on your router uh, by going to attach devices and seeing who's using your router. Mine's just showing me using my router. So make sure you do that every once in a while. And you can check out your uh, wireless logs and see what's going on. So that's, a, that's the best way to protect from an ARP poison um, and really the only way to do so. Alright, so let's take a look at the second one, uh, which is going to be called USB Switchblade. This is a program that, when installed on a USB pen drive, will be able to be inserted into any computer and in, a, in about three seconds pick up all your important information. Let's take a look at how this is done. Alright, so I just now ins inserted my USB um, pen drive with USB Switchblade installed on it. I'm just going to go ahead and open this, and in a matter of seconds, it's going to collect all of my passwords and history uh, that it gathers. Okay, it's done now. So we're just going to go in and take a look at what it grabbed. It grabbed my history, uh, my Internet Explorer passwords, my I instant messaging client passwords, installed updates, mail server passwords, cookies, uh, my network adapter, network passwords, open ports, my product keys for all of my programs, my protected storage passwords, selected passwords, and my startup menu. So, as you can see, that's quite a bit. Um, we'll, we'll just take a look at my open ports and uh, show you that it gathered all this information off my open ports. And uh, I don't think it would have grabbed anything from my selected passwords. Now, I, uh, I cleared all my information before this, um, but you can see uh, my network passwords uh, and shit like that. So you can see this is a pretty dangerous program. So what you got to do to defend yourself from this kind of program um, is lock your computer every time you walk away from it. If you don't feel like your computer is in a secure place, if you're at work and you're worried about losing files that way, lock your computer when you walk away from it. Which brings me to my next program. It's called OffCrack. This program is a, a password recovery tool used to gain a password to an operating system uh, before the boot up uh, even starts. So let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so this is off crack. Um, this is going to be the last uh, product I'm showing you. Uh, it's a USB tool or a CD tool that can be booted before um, your startup on Windows uh, to gain access to your administrator account. Mine's this one right here, Vanity. I set up a, a bogus password for it and we're going to show you how to crack it. And while it's going, I'm going to tell you uh, what LM password 1 and LM password 2 means. Um, passwords are uh, up to 14 characters are split into two parts, LM password 1 being the first seven characters, and LM password 2 being the last seven characters, and NT password being the full password, uh, all put together how it looks and ha in the correct capitalization. Uh, without any at symbols or pound signs or uh, any symbols like that, this this program will crack it. It usually takes just under uh, two minutes or so uh, to get them all. So we'll just sit here and watch this as it uh, attacks my computer. There we go. So it's gotten my password now. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to explain to you the importance of having a password over 14 characters. If you have a password over 14 characters, it will not make an LM password hash, so therefore it will be secure. So I suggest using a passphrase rather than a password. Passphrase would be, I like to go shopping on Monday, or something you can remember um, in a sentence rather than just a word or two words put, pushed together. Alright, so I hope this video has helped you. And I hope that you feel like you've gotten a better understanding of these kinds of programs. And I absolutely hope that this will help you tighten up your security, just even if it's just a little bit. If you like my videos, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below in a comment or leave me a message. I'll make sure to get back to you. Until next time, I'm Jeff with Rogue7. Farewell.